Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today we're gonna continue the dual pension tree build here. And before I do that, I actually did talk to Victor Bart that uh, rescued this board. And he told me he got out of a data center and he believes it's been running for over 10 years. So he, he was appreciative of me servicing the board. And uh, if I'd known it ran for that much, I wouldn't even hesitate, I think. Doesn't mean the cats were bad or anything, but uh, that's a long service life for a motherboard. So I think that uh, was the right decision to do. But it's just, uh, just fun to know where the thing comes from. He told me he basically got the board out of the case at the same time the hard drives went into the shredder. So I want to move on with the add-on cards, uh, the GeForce 3 that we already used and some other add-on cards. We can start with the uh, storage, which is going to be an SSD actually, because uh, we have the very quiet Sunon fans on the coolers, on the Alpha PAL coolers. Also sourced some quiet case fans, I used ones from one of my old HTPCs that are not in use anymore. So my plan is to use an SSD to keep the system quiet. Uh, it's, kind of, it's a bit of a shame to lose out on the SCSI option, but... Uh, you will only hear the SCAS hard rise because I don't have any silent ones left. Most of them are very noisy. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a rock and hard place. You have to pick SCSI or silence, I guess. So that is the SSD I want to use. It's 80 gigabyte Intel 320, so it's a very old one. And sort of 3 gigabit. But uh, that seems to be almost indestructible. I have two of them. And I just sourced this one from uh, like buying an old broken computer. So this one I've been using and testing, and it should work fine. To connect uh, the uh, SSD, we need some way of connecting it. And uh, I do usually use SIL3114 SATA controllers, but this motherboard hates it. Uh, I tried three different ones, they are basically the same, but different biases. And one kind of, I can run Windows with one of them, but I can't install from the optical media, no matter if it's connected to the controller card or connected to the IDE controller of the motherboard. It causes issues, and I've seen this before on other motherboards, so it's a, it's a compatibility issue with the BIOS. So the next solution would be, uh, well, it could be SCSI or IDE hard drive, but I really don't want to use old stuff uh, that I don't like. So alternative is using one of these two here. I bought the second one, I have three of these, one in use and one for testing. I actually used one of these, or actually both of them, to make the previous video, so we're going to use one of these. They are the same, and here is uh, the eBay version. You can actually get these on eBay, but you can also get these on eBay. This was donated to me by a friend. It's like a 5 euro ID to start a controller. And you can really notice here, that's the controller ship on the Chinese 5 euro one. And this is a Marvel controller. It's bigger, and it's better. So these are a lot more expensive, around 25 euros. So you get uh, 5 crap ones for one good. But these can do cable select and master and slave, and I ran two of these on one cable that also works. I use one in my Mac G4. So these have Marvel controllers on them, which uh, is probably why they actually work. Like this thing, which I heard is mainly based on discarded chips that are really not stable. So it probably explains why this thing keeps crashing every third uh, two out of three times to try to boot something of it. Uh, so yeah, these are kind of nice. Uh, one is from Star StarTech.com. The other one is Rank Force, sold by Conrad. So you can find these under different brands. But if you're shopping for one of these, what you really want to look for is that good picture where it says Marvel and uh, no disclaimer that what's on the picture is is not what you're getting or something like that. So you, so you can hold them accountable if you're not getting Marvel. Uh, this one actually has Marvel brand into it. Uh, might be hard to see, but um, yeah, there's an M there, and you can see it on uh, photos usually. So the plan is used to is to use one of these uh, and an ordinary optical unit uh, with the IDE for install on the same cable. Uh, for sound, I did uh, trade uh, for this Sound Lost Live Find for One uh, a pizza for a Sound Lost Live, and the reason why I particularly wanted a Sound Lost Live Find for One is mainly for the uh, a game port because my motherboard has the audio option and game port option removed 
So I, I do uh, want a game port. Uh, so I can hook up uh, one of my joysticks that is uh, analog only. And there's really no other reason. I mean, it's, it's a decent card. There, there are hardware bugs with the EMU 10K controllers. Uh, uh, a lot of times the motherboard manufacturer and the chipset manufacturer gets the blame, but this, uh, the bugs is in here uh, with, I think, PCI mastering. Uh, so yeah, but it, uh, this works fine on this board. I tested it working, so I'm gonna use that. Then I'm thinking we disable the onboard uh, Intel 100 megabit NIC and put this Intel in instead. So this is a uh, one gigabit card. So it's the Pro 1000 GT desktop adapter according to Intel. So it's basically like the big brother to the one that's on the motherboard, the replacement. So that's gonna be nice having a little bit more speed. And I'm thinking of adding this uh, NEC uh, USB 2.0 controller card, mainly because we have two USB ports on the back, which is not a lot. I tend to need about three when I take my computer to a LAN party, depending on what mouse, keyboard and speakers are used. Uh, my speakers are usually USB powered, so when I only had two ports I had to plug them into a phone charger. And also having the 2.0 speed is kind of nice if you want to use something external. There is a header on the motherboard. I found one header. I haven't checked the manual if there's any more, but uh, I think my new case has a front panel with the USB behind the hatch. I'm gonna open that and see because I got the NOS case. So I'm thinking I don't, don't have enough header to break out, delete another two ports from the motherboard with uh, one of those brackets. So this would solve the lack of USB ports. For graphics card, we have a GeForce 3 Ti 200. So we should really have a non-TI, a vanilla card, because they came out early 2001. If I recall, and this is late 2001, but it is slower. TI-200 is the budget version, the TI-500 is the, the fastest version. But it's, 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 uh, it's what I have, and it's fast enough for what we need, so it's gonna do the job just fine, it's, uh, and I like the look of it. It's a budget card, it has really crappy memory, but it works. So that's what we're gonna use. This is my new NOS case. I picked it up at an acquaintance on our retro LAN. So it's an open case, it's called the H500C. Don't know exactly when it came out. Uh, the frame is based on what I can find from AOPEN's like, archive stuff around the 2002, so I think this, based on research, could be anywhere from 2002 to 2005. But it's a beige case, supposed to be. So, let's open it. So that's the new I open case, so let's get it up on a table and have a look at it. Here's the new stock I open case and I think there is some USBs in the front, there's some audio. These are supposed to be some gigantic power LEDs I think. Hopefully I can put a sticker here. So let's open up and have a look inside. So this thing comes with a power supply, it uh, seems to be, uh, I read that this should be an FSP1, uh, maybe, the topology is probably the same. So our power supply got the 6 pin AX connector here for 5, 3.3, 2.3 and uh, 3 grounds. At the back here got two 80mm fan, fan slots, uh, the perforation isn't that great but it's kind of Typical for old cases, I guess. So it seems we have a manual, and there is an, uh, an open sticker for our case. That's kind of nice if we have nothing else to put there. We can do that. Uh, 
It's mostly for the 525s, I think. And that's our accessory pack. This is our AOPEN branded power supply. Uh, it's an AO312 APNF. We're actually going to open this up and uh, yeah, there's always a risk opening power supplies up, but this has never been used and it's probably around 20 years old, give or take. So there shouldn't be any power <laughs> after 20 years. And the reason for opening it is that I, when I Google this, I want to find out if it's crap or not. It's probably kind of crap, but I was hoping was should hoping it would be a decent FSP one. And apparently, these old power supply use a glue that actually the fixed components in place when they make them. We probably seen like it seen, looks like hot snot in the power supplies. Apparently, that gets conductive with time and turns more and more brown. So I want to look for that and also look for bad caps. So let's open this thing. Like I said, disclaimer, if you have a power supply you have been using, I take no responsibility if you open your own power supplies. Like I said, this one hasn't been used in like two decades, so. And, uh, yeah. It looks brand new, it's more or less brand new, but still not. I think that should do it. And I do see problems here. Uh, this brown glue here, I think is what they talked about being bad in these things. It turns conductive, which is kind of a horrible thing. Apparently, they accept that the risk the manufacturer because it's apparently happened after warranty period usually. But I see another couple of problems here. That one is dead. So long. Let's see. Matter that one is dead too, it has leaked. So we've got dead caps in this power supply, and this awful glue that apparently turns more and more brown. And the more brown it gets, the more conductive it gets. And it's apparently not a really big problem on this side of the PCB, but on the other side, we have high voltage. And yeah, and I put that on all the caps. You can kind of see it down here, just to fix them in place before they get soldered on. And yeah, so that's not great. What I have decided is to recap this as much as possible. We might not use it in this build. Uh, <laughs> depends if it blows up or not. Uh, these are not swollen, I think, because uh, they felt like it was swollen, but it's just a plastic cap, uh, like flexing. Uh, it's like a dome. But if you push them down, it's fine. So I can desolder these and check if the actual capacity at least is like what they say. If that's way off, then we're probably bad. Um, so yeah, the plan is uh, to replace as many caps as you can. The brand that seems to have swollen and leaked is called Yamicon. Yeah, so I haven't seen any other brands leak or swell. And they... The Tapio, or whatever they're called, the Tapio over there, are also over here. A brand and that's not swollen. Might replace that anyway. So yeah, I figure I take the support because it hasn't been used and the worst thing it blows up uh, with no nothing connected to it. Uh, best case it works just fine. I have my oscilloscope too. I can actually measure some ripple and stuff uh, and, and run some crap board off this thing if it works. So if nothing else, uh, a spare power supply. But we won't know until we actually try to fix this thing. So. I hadn't uh, counted on having to recap a brand new, brand new old power supply. There are also some other questionable design choices on this power supply, which is supposed to be based on some FSP or BNFC one. So that's like a load uh, resistor for a minimum load, so the power supply stays stable. Like if you run it with nothing connected, it's next to a cap, so you can move that apparently. So that's probably going to do that too. This thing is temperature controlled. You're gonna have to remove all of this. Should be quite easy now to see how bulged they are. And this one has leaked like yeah, some brown crap there. But if you can remove this one, I can get the cables out. Oh, 
I always open up pause plays and check them before I build a computer for myself or anyone. If the pause supply hasn't been used for a long time. And uh, sadly, a lot of the time they are broken and crap. My friend, I don't know how many he has tossed away is because I opened, I opened them and looked in them and he was like, oh, that one? And he doesn't want them recapped, I asked him, but he just like, nope, toss them away and go buy a new one. So, new ones are nice though, they have much better build quality these days. The big problem is the rail to get enough. Enough 5 volts is the problem. It's fine if you're building Pentium 4 kind of systems. Uh, so can 4, 7, 8 and you're fine. And I had to move, remove this tank to actually get the board out. It should be the, I think it said active PFC, but I don't think it's passive. I'm not sure you said PFC, but somewhere it said active, but it might have changed power supply because when I search the A open number, I'd get different kinds of power supplies. So I don't trust it too much. Just gonna. Also, you never know with these old uh, zip ties, they actually go brittle too, so I might as well replace them. But the main reason was to make my life easier with this thing, getting it out of the way. But it felt like the zip tie was brittle. Might as well re zip tie everything. And then also screw it back here. So I'm guessing that's uh, ground. Oh, well, zero volts, the ground plane. Because otherwise. That would seem dangerous otherwise. some kind of hooks which made it really difficult to put it out. Suppose that's just to make it easy for them to put them in so they don't jump out while it gets soldered. So there actually is an FSP group incorporated power supply. FSP. So I'm thinking I'm gonna desolder one of these and just check them for capacity. Possibly can remove the glue I think. So yeah, removing them to check the capacity. I can't, I can't really check ESR and stuff like that. I don't have the equipment yet. I can't afford everything. Kind of broke all the time. And the Swedish Corona is worth nothing, so... And my iron decided to go to sleep. Great timing. I can actually check them now. So I have a multimeter here. I'm just gonna see if I can get it. I can technically connect it to my computer to show it, but I think I do the old simple way to begin with. And then we need to sh select uh, the mode. So no, that's fair. Right? So let's check that. And now we can hook up this one and wait a while. I think it can go up to a little 2000 maybe. It's gonna take a while. It's gonna charge them. If they work and then print out the number 693 microfarads so that's well within the like 20 percent tolerance of 680 so at least that one is uh, fine 
It looks fine in terms of capacity. Uh, if it had leaked somewhere and so on, I would expect it to be more or less dead. And I suppose it can still leak in the future, but for now it seems fine. Checking the second one here. 720. So yeah, a bit high capacity, but within the 20% margin. So I think those are good for what we need for now. Could obviously change them in the future, but for now they should be fine. So the problem here I'm having here is that, that this is 3,300 microfarads at 10 volts. I don't have that. I have less or more, and the more <laughs> the bigger ones. Uh, 12 millimeters. These are 10. So, mm. and I don't know what this one is. That's another one, 3,310 behind there, but a different brand, which is kind of funny how they have two brands. So yeah. Also these splices here is kind of funny, they take two wires into one. I guess we're getting the really crappy one out first. Something cooking. Huh. So, yep, yummy corn. Apparently, I started the wrong thing. These power supplies sometimes, some power supplies that, that happens, I do that. That's not the cap, the cap was that one, but I think it's the I think it's that they buried under all of this, which is kind of annoying. So, I have to remove a lot of solder here to figure out where this cap is coming out. Obviously, I have a piece of copper wire or something here to. Maybe to carry more current. And it was hidden under that. So we got the Tiapo inside there. Mm, inside here, it might be fine. Because we also got one over here that I have no idea what kind of battery it has. So I'll take it just to remove that one. Let's figure out what legs are what. There's a lot of stuff behind here. Well, that was the right one, it just fell out more or less. 2200, 16 volts, and it's actually rated at, I think, 5C. Yep. Don't know about the other brand. And a 5C too, yep. And there's a small cap down here now, I see. Hidden. 1000 microfarad at 10 volts. I'm curious what these bad ones measures. I actually haven't tried that. So I could do that. I think 3300 should work on this. It's on the high side for what this can do, but we'll try and see. I think they're so dead, there might as well not be a capacitor. <laughs> we do have some new 3300s, but they are. 6.3 volts, that'll probably be fine. So, since we're talking about the uh, 5 volt rail and so on, but well, let's see what happens with that. Yeah, so 3700, so that means that the swollen ones are completely dead, out of limit. So, I guess we know now if we ever question leaky caps, uh, they are dead, leaky caps, you shouldn't. Run stuff with leaky caps. So now there's a cap here I want to remove.
That was a microfarad at 10 volts. So. That cap checked out uh, at 1200. Yeah, so what I'm thinking here is since Tiapo keeps checking out at least uh, fine on the capacity, the ESR can't check, sadly. Um, and the culprits were these uh, Yamikon. I think we should uh, put in some new caps and put the big ones back. There's a lot of small caps everywhere. And there could obviously be a problem. I'm gonna check so we don't have like anything else but Tiapo here, but this seems to be... There is another one of those crap ones on this board here. It's just a small one, but since it's the same brand, it's probably bad. And it's because it's so small, we probably can't visually see that bad. Uh, but yeah, so we replaced that, I think. So let's see if it gets out now. Yeah, that might actually be some cable or something there. We don't need to get go. Come on. Yeah, so there's some kind of cable. We can solder that back. So we have this one over here, which is the culprit, a potential culprit. Same bad brand, Yamicon. So that's is what capacity and voltage uh, 16 microfarads, 16 volts. So let's check this one now and see how it performs. 12.74, 15.9, nope, it checks out good, but it's the crap red, so I'm not gonna use it anyway. So I think we'll leave the rest of them on here and solder this thing back.
So yeah, I think it's time to find some replacements for these bad ones. So I want to start down here with this one, uh, the Talos Microfarad one. this stupid resistor over here that I kind of want to move out of the way a little bit because it's gonna be fairly hot and cook the cat for no good reason okay let's do one next to it so that is a 3.3 volt load resistor says there 3.3 volts Okay, thank you for just dropping out. Let's see if we can figure out where to put this thing. So the cab is over there. So the cab is over there. I want this as far away as possible. So here is our load uh, resistor. I think we deal with it when we try to put the whole thing together. For now it's uh, somewhat out of the way. We can probably hook it up with the cables or something. I think the easiest would be to add that one now. So I did find the 16 volt one, same as the 25, but it's, it's a bit shorter. Um, but uh, yeah, why waste the 25s? So hopefully this will reach down there so it's not ideal to have the leads so long but as long as it fits and we can add some glue to hold it in we're fine So I hate the cabin power supplies because for some reason sometimes when trying to buy caps you can't find the, like the small diameter you need. It's kind of annoying. I had an Antec that had like every PCB vertically, like this one, around four caps or something. Yeah, you could just get anything to fit. There was nothing to buy and I even checked the manufacturer of that cap and I didn't have them. So I think that what they did was they took the 10 volts and rebranded them, asked them to be rebranded. So yeah, that isn't a pretty solution, but uh, what's it gonna do? Luckily this thing is only, all, already on an angle, so... So yeah, like I said, this is the only thing I have. So we have to try that, I guess, so it can make it fit.
Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to use some glue later. But that might work. Thank you. Let's see here. I just don't want it to not not get the I don't want the cover not to go on later, that could actually be an issue. Yeah, maybe not the best job ever, but it has to do. So, I've got one left to put back in. It's probably gonna be even tighter. So, just trying to make space for it. That's what it looks like. Hopefully this will work. Obviously more caps we could replace, but uh, I think that's the ones we should really do. And um, yeah, I have problems with finding caps that will fit. So yeah, and we need to put back the big ones obviously. Definitely a little bit dirty. Just want to make sure we have no flux that can cause shorts and stuff like that. Uh, old flux here, new flux. So definitely some crap to rub off. Let's mount this in the case, but before we do, I want to hot snot some stuff in place because these caps are sitting a little bit high and uh, easily want to get bent by these wires here. I'm just gonna put some glue in between here. So I guess I cut the old glue away to put some new in. <laughs> because as soon as the wires fall over this way, I tend to want to bend outwards and I don't want to rip the legs on the caps. Also, I think this coil here, we don't want any resonation, it's two coils here, so i put a little bit on them too. This one that cap. So, I think that's it for now when it comes to gluing.
is using a glue as like thermal compound almost for the fan sensor temperature. So finally after hours after hours of fiddling with this thing, you can actually test it and it's <laughs> some, somewhat likely to blow up I guess, but uh, we'll find out. What I have uh, done is a uh, uh, power supply here with an extension cable, so this is going to turn the power supply on. I have an ATX to AT adapter which is turned off so we can, well if it blows up um, then no, no, before we even turn it on there's no point. I've got a voltmeter connected up to the 5 volt rail. So yeah, this should... If it pops, it usually pops <laughs> when you do this. Mm, nothing popped. There's a sound, but nothing popped as far as I can tell. So let's turn it on. Mm. Five twenty three. And those run faster. So much for that's six volts there, that's kinda low. Let's get a load on it. So oh six volts are connected between five and <laughs> five and that usually gives around seven. So what's uh, the actual one? 756. I hooked up a pension tree motherboard uh, to test it out. It's one of my lab boards. And this power supply, and as you can hear, or maybe not here, it's a lot quieter now. And it seems like the power supply has this kind of, almost like a graphics card feature, where it runs at a high speed in the beginning and then it quiets down. I think it takes like a minute or two. So it's really quiet now. So I suppose that's a smart feature. If there's a lot of dust, you can blow it out. Uh, if the fan is getting worn out, it's, it's a hard time starting up. So basically what it seems to have is like a high, full on, like 12 volt start voltage, like some motherboards do and graphics cards do. So that's pretty smart. So what you're actually hearing is this CPU fan. And that's basically a brand new Sunon. Right now that is 503 measured by multimeter. That is pretty high in real life, but it's not like stupid high. It's, uh, It's close, but it's five, uh, twelve point uh, ten. We don't have that much load on the system either. So, with the power supply serviced and fixed, uh, we can actually start the final assembly here. So, put the case up on the desk here. Sadly, I don't have a million cameras and uh, an LTT budget here, so I can't make like five thousand dollar upgrade build here with some high quality footage. But uh, yeah. Gonna do my best here with what I have. So I need to put in some uh, spacers for the motherboard. I think that's the first thing to do. Also, it's really nice that this IO sheet that came with the uh, with the case actually matches the motherboard. Because I didn't get one with the motherboard, so I would have to make one then if I wanted that hole to be hidden. I also sent these like rubber domes with it, and I'm actually gonna use those under memory. This is very common and this board suffers from it where the board has flexed where the memory is. So I figure it's a good idea to have some support under the memory, it's always nice. So for fans I got some big quiet ones I took out of an HTPC some crappy fans in there. So these are old ones, like really early ones, like Be Quiet, uh, Silent Wings Pure. So I think these go back to like the AM2 era. So they're not mint, but they're, they're very good fans to start at 2.8 volts when I tested it. I think officially it's like 3.5 or 4. 
I can run them at like four or 400 RPM easily, probably lower. I ran at four and at 400, and that was at four or five volts. At 6.1 volts now, they're on just about 1000. And I uh, got these uh, uh, like extensions on here. But I'm actually thinking doing to solder on on this cable an extension. Uh, well, not an extension, but a resistor. Because I don't, I don't think I can have this on the motherboard. Barely, but I really don't want to. So I'm probably gonna do that. Uh, but just gonna check the, the wiring here. This would be coming down like so. And like over here. So let's we'll see if that fits. It's gonna be tight with the cables, but we'll find out soon enough. So what I think I'd do instead is I'm just gonna cut these off, remove these in the middle, permanently install these as like like extensions. That way I don't have to have this clamped on the motherboard, which I don't want to. Now we have one of the worst looking cables ever. There's some tape to hold them together a little bit. And splice them in three places. Because that's... Well, it's too short. But at least everything is spliced. And shrink draft, so... No risk of short or anything like that. So now let's try the motherboard again. I lost count, but... Uh, let's try number N, I suppose. That's what we worked to, uh, worked for to get that nice and done. I got 6.1 volts to the fans. Should give about a thousand RPM each, combined with the uh, with the power supply. We should have more than enough ventilation, I think, for these CPUs. So I'm thinking we should just get the front panel headers out of the way. Don't really need a speaker cable since we have a speaker in the motherboard, but uh, I'd rather connect it so not having cable dangling if I can avoid it. I'm tucking away the audio connector because uh, the motherboard doesn't have any audio and my sound card doesn't have any header because it's creative and some of the early ones don't have the connector at all like you can buy adapter for later ones but uh, the one I picked have nothing uh, the Sound Lost Live seems to have nothing for that you can obviously mod them like people done you can mod just start the wires to the rear port to get the front there that way but I'm not gonna bother I rarely use the front ones anyway
So let's mount the power supply. So what you can do with this cable mess here. You don't need all this length here. Now I need to figure out where to mount the SSD. Usually I put in five and a quarter bay because we can use the holes there. But with this adapter, it's not as easy. So I think I found something in my box of adapters. This should work. So it's just uh, this doesn't hit this side here. Plus, uh, the ID connector is going to line up better with the optical unit. The power is long enough. Sometimes the connection on the cable between the, the Molex and floppy and... Well, especially on modern power supplies, they space the Molex connectors out. So, there's such a short distance that you end up with all of them in one place and you can't really use them. I think what we have left to do now is uh, add on cards. Start with the graphics card, I guess. So I'll start with the network card up here, I think. USB card. And then the sound card. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. We got the fans in, motherboard obviously with CPU and RAM. Add-on cards, SSD, OptiBurnt up there, power supply. Everything should be connected. We can connect. So yeah, I think it's uh, testing time. So it's time for a post-test. So power on. So we're in the BIOS here, and we've got 2824 megs of memory. Let's see here. So here we've got hardware monitor, you can see the voltages. Um, I don't think that's correct because this board is always shown lower, but we can check that. Multimeter. So, multimeter on the bottom, we check the 3.3 volt. 331, so that's perfect. And 5 is mm, 494, which is not that far off. And this is on the AX connector. I do wonder what the Molexes say. Unloaded Molex 498, yeah. So a bit of a drop, but that's where the AX connector comes in because I think I had like 100 millivolts before, so now I have like uh, 40 or something. We only have one case fan reporting here, but that's fine. But uh, it's red, it's a two dollar gram for my watch lighting, so we can set that to ignore. Now, let's see if we have the bootable devices. Where are my drives? 
Ja, så Intel, ja, as expected. That's an Intel SSD, 80 GB, and optical unit. The next thing to do is install an OS, and uh, yeah, that's kind of boring. Finally installed Windows, and so it's kind of boring, and... Uh, but then most things went fine. It took uh, three different graphics driver attempts before I found a driver I liked for that. Some were slow in games. Some loaded wheels very slowly. I noticed that before on our test setup. But I set it for a driver there. Uh, I think it was the NVIDIA 30.78 or 87. I uh, can check. Uh, 30.87 So Got our network adapter here Pro 1000 GT So 1 gigabit And that's just uh, Even tools This drives our Intel Uh, I installed uh, the driver for the Creative Sunblast Live, so that's done. I haven't installed any driver for the, net, for the USB card, but I think they actually are working. Because it says NEC here, yeah. So I think this should be full speed. I haven't tried if they're actually full USB to low speed. But the uh, NEC cards tend to work. That's a 2.0 hub there. So yeah, that, this should be 2.0 because the motherboard doesn't have it. All the drivers are installed that we need. Obviously, have two CPUs and a ton of RAM. Did install a motherboard monitor here so we can see our temp temperatures here and uh, the CPUs one and two. And I think that should actually be a CPU, but uh, we can monitor the temperatures and voltage just now, so that's kind of nice. So I started up Everest here, so you can see our motherboard up here, bus speeds and memory speeds we're running. Yeah, I did overclock the graphics card a little bit. So yeah, I think that's it for now when it comes to software, because I'm gonna make a part 3 where we run some benchmarks on this system so we can actually see how it performs. But uh, this video is long enough with the whole power supply debacle. So yeah, this is my dual Pelton 3 build and uh, if you want to see benchmarks of it, you can wait for part 3 we we'll do some games and program benchmarks and compare it to my Atron MP and maybe some other systems. So yeah, thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainlan.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members' private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels, where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.